All right, hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back. I am so excited for today's video because we get to talk about everything that I love, which is OBGYN, but in particular, labor and delivery. Essentially, I have a bunch of footage here from a day on labor and delivery. It was a 27 hour shift, so a lot of really cool things happened this day. I wanna talk you through it, but I also want to tell you about the things that I do to stay proactive and to stand out on these rotations because um, as you know I am applying into OBGYN and so this is actually my fourth year audition rotation or sub internship so there are things that I like to do to stand out and just to be prepared for anything so yeah I want to go through it so let's do that if this is your first time watching a video on my channel welcome my name is Rachel I'm a fourth year medical student I'm applying in OBGYN I'm in my fourth year of medical school and I post videos every Saturday so yeah um, welcome join our herd we're happy and a great time we'd love to have you and let's get started. At this particular hospital, the sign off from the overnight team is at 6 a.m. And so I was actually living in the hospital. If you haven't seen those vlogs, definitely check them out. But I was living in the hospital. And so I got up around 5.30, got dressed, washed my face, all of that stuff, and then grabbed some coffee and headed over to labor and delivery, a very short commute. Initially, I am wearing my own scrubs when heading into labor and delivery. And then once you get into the unit, you change into the scrubs that the hospital has for you just because you can wear those into the OR. Also, it makes more sense because you don't want to have all of these bodily fluids potentially getting on you and then you taking those scrubs home to wash in your washer. So I change into the scrubs and then meet the residents in the resident charting room and you're getting sign out from the overnight team. We're talking about the current patients that we have right now, what happened overnight, all that stuff, everyone that we need to round on. So we have the antepartum patients, the laboring patients, postpartum, and then also sometimes we have some guide patients that we also round on. Once we get the sign out from the overnight team, that's when I start pre-charting on the patients that I'm going to round on. So typically I rounded on the postpartum patients and then also introduced myself to the laboring patients um, in the event that they deliver while I'm on my shift. I want to make sure that they're okay with me being present for the delivery, um, that they're okay with me participating in the delivery. And what I mean by pre-charting is that I am essentially kind of writing out the template for the notes. Usually there's like a dot for um, if you don't know what that is, you'll know later. But typically there's like a dot phrase that you can use and then I start filling in some of the updated information like the labs and all of that. And then I have the note ready so I just can go around on the patients and then come back, fill in the updates and then I can send the note to the resident for them to review it and sign. It just makes more sense to pre like type out the note just because you're also reviewing the patient's information at the same time and kind of seeing what happened with their delivery or whatever why they're here. After rounding and finishing the notes on the patients, I like to grab some supplies just to keep in my pocket to always be prepared. Um, some of the things I like to grab were um, jelly, like lubricant. You obviously use those for vaginal exams, the sterile speculum exams. So I like to keep a pair of the sterile gloves in case there's a delivery happening or you need them for triage, whatever. It's really convenient to have a pair in your pocket and ones that are your size. I'm a size six. After grabbing the supplies, I like to pre-scrub and this is different than what you might expect scrubbing to be like or like what you see in the movies or Grey's Anatomy um, but essentially you do the first scrub of your day and once you scrub for the first time of the day you don't have to keep scrubbing every time you go into the OR you scrub one time in the morning and then you can use like Avogard or this stuff called like sterile I don't know it's some other thing um, I like to use Avogard but you scrub first and then you um, can just dry off and with just a paper towel doesn't you're not sterile so if you're noticing in the video like I'm not wearing a surgical mask like you need a surgical mask to go into the OR um, obviously like the scrub technique is like you're not sterile so you can use the paper towels to dry off and then um, I'm touching everything obviously my phone's sitting right there um, if I were going straight into the OR I would not be able to touch anything and um, I would have to have eye protection on the surgical mask all the above on this particular morning I had some time to grab some food and the residents always say like if you can eat please eat if you can sleep sleep so because you just don't know if you're gonna ever have time to eat or sleep for the rest of the shift so if if there is any time that you can go do it I grabbed some food and had a little bite before we went to board round and what board rounds are is just like everyone coming together in the morning to talk about what who's on the floor right now and all of that stuff so it's like the attendings the residents the med students the pharmacists nursing um, like 
the like care coordinator type people, um, pediatrician, the, everyone who's kind of there for the delivery and also who takes care of the patients like as a whole. And after board rounds, then you just go and monitor the floor. You're taking in people who are coming in for triage and the laboring patients, of course, um, and everything in between. So on this particular day, there was a constant influx of patients coming in for like suspected ruptured membranes. So, oh, my water broke and, um, or like labor, they're like, I'm in labor. I'm having contractions this many like minutes apart and they're very painful. It was really exciting because there's just so much to learn and so much to see and what I absolutely love about OBGYN is that there's so much variability in things that you get to do, different tests that you do on the spot or like procedures you do on the spot. So since there are a lot of patients coming in for um, spontaneous rupture membranes, typically they come in and they always say, oh my water broke and then you ask them what makes you think that your water broke and then they describe what happened or like, oh I got up really early in the morning and I had a big gush of fluid or I woke up and there was a pool of fluid. So more often than not, the patient obviously like knows or can feel when their water broke and when they have that big gush of fluid. Sometimes they don't know and they're just, they have a small leak and they're constantly leaking. Um, sometimes it's just extra vaginal discharge or sometimes they had intercourse the night before and then there's just like extra um, like bodily fluid coming out. So then you have to check and there's multiple things that you can do to check. One thing is a sterile speculum exam. You use a speculum and you look inside the um, vaginal vault and if there's like a pool of fluid in the vault then that's a positive test. There's also the ferning test where you um, get a swab of the fluid inside the vault and you smear it onto a slide and you look at it under the microscope and if you see ferning, um, like you see here, then that's a positive test as well. And ferning is just what shows on the slide when amniotic fluid dries, it's this really pretty fern pattern. Um, sometimes you see sperm and um, and so like I said, sometimes patients think that their water broke, but um, it's not, it's just extra fluid and um, we look and sometimes we see sperm. And then there's also amnesure, which is just like, you put this, um, you get a swab of the fluid, you put it in this like solution and you wait for, I think 10 minutes, I wanna say. And if there's like a positive, um, like results, then obviously it's positive. Those are the tests that you do if you um, suspect that they ruptured their membranes. The patients that are coming into the labor and delivery triage are pregnant. You're not getting like vaginal bleeding from a non-pregnant patient in labor and delivery triage. It's just for pregnant patients. Other complaints that patients will come in for um, are like painful contractions or sometimes they think that they're in labor but it's actually just Braxton Hicks contractions. If they're having UTI type symptoms in pregnancy, preeclampsia type symptoms like visual changes, headache, right upper quadrant pain. They have decreased fetal movement. Pregnant patients kind of come in for everything which is what we want them to do. If they feel anything weird or different um, or something is just not right, um, we always encourage them to come in just so we can make sure everything is okay because um, anything can happen and anything can change really quickly. And so we always want them to come in for for anything, even if it's like just a headache that won't go away because then we need to work that up for preeclampsia. So yeah, so they can come in for a lot of different things and they did this day and it was a really fun day of learning. Um, at two o'clock on this day, we had didactics. We did a um, DNC of a papaya. It was super fun. I've gotten to do a DNC in the OR of obviously like with an attending on other rotations. And I must say that scraping a papaya um, has the same like cry as a uterus. So it was pretty weird. It felt very realistic. After didactics, they finished around 6 p.m. We um, went back to labor and delivery. We just like, you know, got back and saw what the floor looked like, what was going on, um, and then seeing any triage patients. I have some footage of me actually talking to the camera that I wanna show you, so I'll play that right now. Okay, hey everyone, what's up? It is about 3 a.m. It has been a super crazy night so far. <laughs> Um, the babies have been very naughty, misbehaving on the monitors. There's been a lot of D-cells tonight, late D-cells, and um, babies just not tolerating labor that well, and just having really funky fetal heart rate tracings. Pretty much every baby was acting up, and so we had to like rush to each room. Then we had like a quick C-section, um, baby wasn't tolerating labor. It's been a really cool night and I'm glad that my last shift is kind of going out with a bang. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. 
um because i am learning a lot tonight still as of right now there is not much going on so i actually can lay down which is nice because i am planning on driving straight home after this shift if i get enough sleep tonight yeah i'm gonna take advantage of that and sleep while i can and then we'll see what happens so just want to update you because i know i have been very bad at vlogging lately and i apologize going to lay off the light okay good night had a sweet delivery i slept for probably a half an hour i think and then i got a call and i got to do a little delivery which was so fun um and then um stayed awake and i rounded on some postpartum patients this morning and um yeah so it's about five ten right now and we have sign out at six, I stay until nine. So I, um, I'm i gonna lay down for a bit because I like rounded on the people I needed to round on and there's nothing for me to do right now, so. Overall, the shift was very intense. There was a lot of stuff going on for most of the day into the evening. Um, and then the early morning, I kind of got some more downtime. I definitely prefer having a shift that's like more constant or like nonstop working versus a shift where there's nothing going on just because there's not much to learn when the floor is quiet. So I really appreciated having a shift like this. And this actually was my last shift for this audition. So um, I was very happy that it was just so chaotic because um, there's just a lot of learning to be done and you kind of don't realize how tired you are because you're just like energized by everything that's going on. And so I had a really great last shift. This rotation was just fantastic altogether and I learned so much and I just feel, um, I feel so like, Ah, it just feels so good. If you haven't already, I really hope that you guys find something that you're passionate about, whether it is OBGYN or something else, um, even a hobby. It is just such a good feeling to want to get up every single day and do something that you love and um, to be in love with something that makes your world go round. It is just, it's a different feeling and it gives my life so much purpose and it's so fulfilling and um, I want you guys to experience that and if you haven't yet, that's okay It'll come to you and you will be so happy and I'm really excited for you Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video a little bit different and uh, it was fun to do and so yeah I love you guys so much um, Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it comment down below something that you're passionate about I'd love to um, hear your guys's passions. Yeah until next time take care of yourselves be kind to yourselves continue to work hard and all the good stuff Okay I'm gonna give it my best And hopefully I'll make it out of one piece